program today. So we've already talked a little bit about replicated local storage. I've already said it's a software-based distributed network storage solution that pools lots of this together from different servers together and uh, allows you to present it all as one or a lot more virtual drives. Um, benefits are you can allow multiple servers to access it at the same time, very similar to with the SAN or NAS. It's really relatively easy to scale by adding more nodes or disks. Um, provides redundancy across disks. We talk about high availability a little bit. Um, and it offers some SAN and NAS, uh, sorry, SAN and DAS features on the cheap. Uh, like Sam mentioned, a lot of people want high availability in their virtual environment or they want to be able to do uh, failover slash emotion and migrate those virtual machines. And with this new technology, you can do that. Um, so, Sam, uh, mm -hmm. this topic has probably not really well understood, and a lot of people in the comments <laughs> when we announced this webinar said they wanted to hear about it. So uh, TCPIP, one of our users, he said everybody wants to know uh, what's the best bang for their buck, and I think vSAN fits the bill for most organizations. Now, please talk lots about vSAN. So, Sam, take it away. Sure. Uh, so, I mentioned uh, earlier that um, it, one of the things that on the complexity line, I mentioned that there's local storage, but then replicated local storage, and NAS, and replicated NAS, and SAN, and replicated SAN. And this is one of the spots where I think it pays to, to take a moment and really understand that, that each of these storage types on their own is non-replicated, right? When we're talking just local, DAS, NAS, and SAN, those are single devices. Um, any one, they're all exactly the same. When you look at the device itself, if you, if you pull a NAS out of, the, out of the rack and a server out of the rack and a SAN out of the rack and look at them, they're all the same thing. They're a computer with drives, uh, with a controller, and a RAID array, the disks are local when you're looking at it. And so each of those things on their own, I mean, they vary some, right? A SAN and a NAS are not completely identical, but they're effectively identical uh, when you really get down to it. There's a CPU, there's firmware, there's whatever. And, and so the, the reliability of the individual devices is roughly equal with a slight benefit going to servers uh, because of the scale at which they're sold at. They get more engineering per dollar. Um, spent on them, right, per dollar that you spend on them as an as end user. And uh, so when we look at any of these technologies, they're non-replicated. It's a single point of failure no matter how you look at it. We take each of those technologies and apply replication of some sort to it. Uh, and often we refer to it as clustering or whatever or a high availability mode. But in all those cases, it's a type of replication. And a lot of people associate that replication with SAN or with NAS and don't associate it with local storage. And that's where some of the confusion comes from, is that we think of SAN as being replicated and local storage as not being replicated. But in the real world, they're exactly the same, and you have to choose whether to replicate or whether not to replicate each of them. So what we're bringing really to the local storage here is not something it's, 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 first of all, it's not new. Uh, the products we're, we're mentioning here are really, really cool, and they're new. Uh, but the concept of replicated local storage is very old and actually goes back to, you know, local storage was replicated before SAN existed, right? SAN needed local storage to have replication technology before SAN could have it, before SAN could even be made. So, so this is actually where replication comes from historically. Uh, and all those features that exist in NAS and SAN also exist with local storage. You can always build a NAS or a SAN on your own using, um, you know, take Windows or take Linux and put it on a couple servers and apply replication technologies and then share things out as iSCSI or share things out as Fiber Channel or share things out as uh, SMB, and you're building either a SAN or a NAS yourself. And however you built it, that's replicated local storage to you. So if you go to NetApp or you go to EMC or you go to Hitachi and you get their SAN to them, their SAN is replicated local storage. It is only a SAN to you as the end user. So that's a, a very important uh, distinction, I think, that there's nothing specifically magical about replicated local storage except for the fact that it has the benefits on the complexity scale of being associated with local storage. We don't need extra physical devices. We don't need extra networking. It simply keeps the 
the overall complexity in networking and, ch and chassis sprawl to a minimum. Uh, but the concepts of the replication stay the same. So what's awesome about replicated local storage then is that we simply eliminate those costs and those complexities. So our risk goes down, our cost goes down, our complexity goes down because it's local storage, but we can then approach super high reliability by doing the type of replication that we generally associate with things like SAM. Um, okay. Now, the, we, the can do it, we can do it on, on the cheap too, right? Because you're not having to that's buy right. a so, SAM unit or now. Right. Typically, we can save a lot of money doing that. What's, what's tricky there is there's a tendency of people to take replicated local storage, which is the highest availability approach you can do, right? Local storage is the most reliable non-replicated uh, and so when you add replication, local storage remains the most reliable. So this is the absolute extreme most reliable architecture that you can do. What people often do, though, is they'll take the replicated local storage and compare it to non-replicated SAN and say, well, look, I can, I can get my SAN really cheap. And that's true because they're not replicating it. Replication costs money. You need copies of your data all over the place. You need software that does that replication. You need extra devices to hold that stuff. And so because they compare apples and oranges, sometimes they'll say, well, I can, I can build uh, three VMware servers and a single cheap SAN cheaper than vSAN, so, so that's better. But if, if you can justify that, right, if you're okay with a SAN without it being replicated, you'd be better served by local storage in every case, and people will make the argument, well, my front end can fail over, but that's completely missing the risk picture because your SAN can't fail over. All you, you have four devices that sit on um, a single point of failure, and you've created uh, the infamous inverted pyramid, so you have lots of layers of failure, and you have a dependency chain. So you, when we talk about the what standard availability, what's high availability, and what's low, even though you have four or six devices, depending on how many switches you have, um, you've actually moved to low availability. You're below standard <laughs> availability, which is completely the opposite of the goal you would have if you were comparing replicated local storage to that, right? right. So okay. this is any replicated uh, is, is we're trying to get to high availability or as close to it as possible. It's fine to not hit what we would call high, uh, but to be higher okay. than standard. Okay, and going back to the comment from TCPIP, he said, now that uh, technologies like vSAN are available, it throws a loop into everything because it, it's a hybrid of DAS and SAN. So going forward, do you expect more people to, to adopt technologies like our RLS and for it to become more popular? Yes, um, RLS uh, really should cover the vast majority of the SMB market especially when non-replicated local storage doesn't cover it, right? So I said local storage covers about 80%. Uh, uh, RLS is going to cover probably around 15% of what's left. So this kind of takes us up to 95%. Um, because the, if your reason for moving away from local storage is availability, then replicated local storage is your go-to answer. Uh, the thing that it doesn't cover is large scale. So if you're leaving local storage because of scaling reasons, which is very rare in the SMB. It's pretty rare in large business, uh, but it's extremely rare in the SMB that there's actually a scaling need. Uh, but if that does happen, then RLS um, is, is not your answer.